guys. Happy Monday. You guys know what that means. Today is making food Monday and today we're going to be doing something that I did not plan to do but I feel it's necessary. Um, we were gifted a whole bunch of plums and these plums have been getting eaten like crazy but I've still got one last bowl of them that are just getting so ripe and mushy I have to do something with them. So I thought I'd include you guys and I would try out a plum cobbler. have never made a plum cobbler and I've certainly never made a plum cobbler or a cobbler of any kind in my pressure cooker but today we are going to make a plum cobbler uh, I struggled between a crisp a cobbler something you put crispy stuff on top so the reviews that I read on this one were really really good everyone said you can use any kind of fruit that you want so feel free to use any kind of fruit that you want um, but that this one comes out good every time so I thought I'm gonna try this particular recipe because it sounds the easiest, it comes out really good, and hopefully it's an excellent way to use these plums because they've gotta go. For today's recipe, we'll be using plums or whatever fruit you have, butter, milk, flour, sugar, vanilla, and baking powder. First thing we're gonna do today is grab our flour and get one and one quarter cup of flour put into our mixing bowl. There's one and one cup, quarter, excuse me, one and one quarter cup of flour. I need one half cup of sugar, half a cup of sugar. I need one and one half teaspoon of baking powder. There's one and one half teaspoon of baking powder. We need one third of a cup of butter. We need one teaspoon of vanilla. And there we go. And then we're gonna mix this together until it's all combined. Now to prepare the plums, I'm gonna cut it in half, take the pit out, and uh, just toss the whole thing in. They're really, really soft. Okay guys, so the recipe that I'm using calls for three quarters of a cup of fruit, but I don't think that recipe took into consideration the amount of plums that I'm trying to get rid of. Also, I'm gonna use one cup of plums. I took most of, or some of, or maybe half of, I don't even know. I took some of the skins out, because to me, plum skins are a little bit bitter, and I didn't really want that in. But I did leave some, because that little slight bit of bitter might be good. So, just to balance out the flavor, I took a little bit of that skin out, and also, I can use more plums that way. And then we're gonna add that to the mixture and fold it in. Now, you're gonna to wanna to use your ramekins for this one for your pot in pot. So for these, I'm going to coat them with some nonstick spray, just to make sure that our cobbler doesn't stick to them. And then we're just gonna fill the ramekins all the way to the top. I'm gonna to use a scoop here. So just plop that into the first one. You guys, I might have to admit defeat on this one. I just realized that my milk is still sitting here and I've not used it. I did not add any milk to these. And now I've already folded the fruit in. <sighs> Silly me. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go back and add my milk. So I'm putting all of this back in the bowl and I'm gonna add my milk. Okay guys, it's all back in the bowl. Now I'm gonna add my milk. I need three quarters of a cup. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Now I'm gonna have to give that a good mix, obviously. So my fruit is going to be mixed in, not folded. Okay, I've got the milk incorporated, and I've gotta say, if the batter flavor is any indication of how good these are gonna be, I still have hope, because that's yummy. Okay guys, I just gave these ramekins a quick rinse, and now I'm going to spray them one more time, make sure that nothing sticks to the inside of them, because it would really be a bummer to make this cobbler and have it stick. So, now we're gonna take one scoop like we did before into each one of our ramekins, trying really hard not to make a mess and to aim the camera in the right place. There we go. Now we're just gonna even them out 
by filling them all just a little bit more as we go until we get all of the batter used up. It occurred to me that I won't be able to get any of these out once they're hot. I've given them each a foil sling so that I can get them in and out easily, even when they're hot. Here's the thing, if I put these in the bottom with nothing underneath them, I can't get a hold of them to get them back out unless I've got like a special mitt or something, which I don't have. So if you have that, you don't need a sling, but in my case, I don't have that. So I'm making foil slings. So here's how it goes. Get a piece of foil, fold it in half, put it underneath it, and then you can pick it up by these, we'll call them handles. You can pick it up by the handles. You can even do it with one hand. Check that out, one-handed. So you can pick it up, place it in here with the handles attached. So I've placed all three in the bottom and I've bent this, the one that's on the inside of the ramekin, the handle that's on the inside, I've bent it down towards the, uh, towards the cobbler, but not into the cobbler, just towards it. And now I'm gonna place my trivet and hopefully this is going to help me avoid a, a headache when it comes time to get them out of there. So I've got my water in the bottom. I've got all of my cobblers in. This one I can just kind of move out of the way so that I can close it. And now I'm ready to seal her up. Lid on, push down, <laughs> plug it in. I'm thinking, why isn't it singing to me? Oh yeah, you have to plug it in, ding dong. Locked. I'm going to press the chicken function, even though I know there's no chicken in there, that's gonna be high pressure for me. So I'm gonna push the chicken function and I'm gonna bring that time down to 15 minutes. Now, the recipe that I'm using says to use 12 minutes, but I'm bringing that up because he's using one inch ramekins and I'm using two inch ramekins. So I'm gonna put 15 minutes and go ahead and let that start. And in about 15 minutes, we're gonna let the pressure come down naturally for the first five minutes. So see you later, little friend. I found this recipe online, and now that I've put it together, it's occurring to me that this is probably not a traditional cobbler, because to, a cobbler to me is crust with some yummy, juicy goodness inside, so I don't know that I'm gonna call it a cobbler. I'll probably call that because that's what the recipe called it, but for the record, I realize this is not a traditional cobbler. However, this is how we're making it, so today, uh, this is considered a cobbler. Okay, my timer has gone off. I have let it sit here for five minutes, and now it is time to let out the pressure. Apparently there's not much left in there. Oh, that was fast. Okay, let's open it and see what we've got. Ah! <laughs> that doesn't look like cobbler. Now we just need to let these sit here and cool and, and we're gonna do that while we eat dinner. Well, it's cooled off. We actually had to go to a softball game in the meantime, so now it's extremely cool and it's a little bit rubbery. I hope it didn't completely change the texture of it. But now we're ready to give it a shot. What do you have to say? What do we need? Candy bread! <laughs> Your hair looks weird, guinea pig. Fix it. Guinea pig. Your weirdness. Hello, oh, fast guinea pig. I'm a dinosaur guinea pig. So who smelled it when it came out? Not me. Not me. You guys didn't even smell it? Oh, it's such a bummer, because it doesn't smell like much now. Okay, who wants to try it first? Me. Mia's first today. Woo! Okay, I'm Mia, gonna, give it a shot. I'm gonna try the ice cream first. No, ice we already know you like ice cream. Try mm -hmm. the cobbler. The cobbler. It's not really a cobbler. I'm scared. One, two, three. Mm. Is it good? You don't like it? Aww. Alright, Nano, you're up. I want to try a bite with ice cream and cobbler. Okay, good. Then I have to cut a piece like that. There you go. Whoop. Too big. Clean up a nail, Nano. Mmm. <laughs> thumbs. How many thumbs? Mm. Two? It's good. It's just not amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Dad, you're up. Here we go. Mm. I can't believe it got all rubbery. I'm sad. Well, it's because we let it sit there for a while. I it know. Sat there for a while.
Mm. It's got good flavor. Definitely with the ice cream, it's delicious. Definitely. But definitely. Definitely. Texture is me. It's chewy because like, because <clears throat> it's sat there, but everything else, it has really good flavor. I like it. It has good flavor. I can taste the plum. Two thumbs? I give it a thumbs up. Definitely. Nice. Definitely I'll have it again. <laughs> okay guys, so the texture is rubbery kind of all the way down through it. I'm not sure if this was user error, like if I just didn't make it right or if maybe just leaving it to, to cool for too long made it gelatinous, but it, it's really kind of rubber all the way through. It's kind of disappointing. The flavor is good, but the texture is really disappointing. <sighs> Final thoughts. Okay, the texture was wrong. It was disappointing and it was kind of rubbery and it was not very good. However, the flavor was really nice. I really like the flavor. So, I think perhaps what happened to this recipe was when I forgot to mix the milk in and I had to go back in and mix it all together. Maybe that just completely messed with the whole texture. And because of that, it turned out kind of a, a texture wise. Flavor wise, it's still good because all those flavors are still gonna mix together. Um, so next time I will, I will try it again because the flavor is good, but next time I'll mix them in the right order fold in my fruit like I'm supposed to, and then see if it turns out right. Now, as soon as I get a chance to do that, I'm gonna try it again, I am going to try it again. I will comment down below as soon as I get a chance to do it again, and I'll let you guys know if that fixed it or if this recipe's just meh. So for now, I'm gonna say the recipe is probably fine, it was user error that messed it up, but next time I try it, and I've got plenty of plums so I can try it again, um, I will let you know if it works better when you mix it in the right order and then eat it before it gets seven hours old. Really, it's not that old, but it's it's rubbery. And probably it's because I mixed them in the wrong order and I messed it up. So I will let you guys know. I will try it again and I will comment below when I get to try it again. So watch those comments. And um, if you see that I've done it again, you'll know that it's not just the recipe, it was me. Anyway, I think this one gets one thumb up because the flavor is good, but the texture is not. So you guys can try it if you'd like. Uh, mix things in the right order. I, I think mom's trying to say some slack. Thumb sideways? Thumb sideways, guys. Thumb sideways. Okay, so, dessert. Texture? Mm. What about flavor? You still didn't like the flavor? <laughs> I like, uh, okay, I like part of it. <laughs> so, thumb sideways or thumbs down? I'll say... Some. Thumbs up for the vanilla ice cream. Thanks, Mia. Thumbs I worked really hard on scooping that out of the container. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to make this channel strong, share it with your friends. I'm just kidding. And now, good night, YouTube. See you tomorrow. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe now.